Welcome, my friends, my family, my fellow gamers. It's your only friend, these YouTube streets, Porter Rock 77, back with another hot take. I apologize for not having this hot take out where I usually have it every Thursday. You know, a couple of things got me busy, but I'm here now, right? So today's hot take is Sony releasing a redesigned or a revisited or remodeled PlayStation 5. I've seen a lot of misinformation on Twitter. Of course, it's from the fanboys. It's... You know, it, you, it's, it's, they, any topic gets poisoned by them. And it's really uh, just a load of misinformation, you know. And, and, and I just thought, you know, let me hit this hot take so I could get the real information out there. So if people are truly interested in what's going on or interested in what's going on, at least they get the right info, right? And, and that's something that has an agenda to it, right? So we'll start this off. So as you can see right here, GameSpot reported on their Twitter. A PS5 redesign is reportedly coming next year due to the global semiconductor shortage affecting console supply. Now, technically, that statement right there, you know, if, if, if you have a third grade or fourth grade education and a teacher asked you, you know, what does that statement mean? You should be like, well, the what the statement is trying to tell me is that there's going to be a redesign because um, they need an answer for the, you know, for the shortage affecting the supply or something, right? Something to that effect, you know, but that's not what a certain segment of the gaming community got out of that. And to show you for examples, and of course I, I blocked out, I blacked out, I redacted, um, some info to, uh, so that way, um, you don't see their identity for that much because I'm saying my channel is not really about that for the most part, but you can see here, here's one example. They normally don't do this until mid gen or later, usually at least four years in not a year and a half and there are some serious problems with the ps5 right a little bit messed up english but you know twitter ios whatever whatever okay um here's another example um and you notice the one thing i did not black out is the key term so that should give you an idea of what group I'm talking about, right? Same here. I've been telling folks that PS5 was a glitchy, poorly designed mess. Now Sony would just ignore all the glitch boxes sold and all the units they will sell over the next year. Then they will be praised for the internal redesign and all the extra sales of fanboys are rebuying. My God, Jesus, man. Like, like, it's come to this where, like, facts, facts just doesn't apply. Even though the title actually said what it's for but if you were to click the link and read it you would have read this during the company's annual earnings report sony cso's hiroki totoki I, I apologize if i mispronounce his name confirmed that a shortage of semiconductor is behind delays to the production of the playstation 5 and to counter the problem sony's even considering changing the design of the console to counter the shortage you know, uh, in the delays of production, a potential redesign is going to be uh, considered. A, a potential redesign was always in consideration, right? This is actually a normal thing, right? Let me show you something else here. This this is um what I got from my article about the PlayStation 4. Sony has released three different PlayStation 4 models to date, starting with the CUH-1000 followed by the CUH-1100 and now the CUH-1200. The CUH-1000 being the launch model suffered from loud fan noises and overheating issues fortunately the overheating issues were reported in a small scale quite rightly sony did not take any chances and they were quick to act by releasing a cuh 1100 just 10 months after launch without any announcements right okay so this is not really an unprecedented thing sony has usually redesigned their consoles overall okay they usually study and release different models and that's something they do that's something they've done as you can see here with the playstation one the main reason above all else why they do this is because what you're about to see ps4 to be sold at a loss but launch day recoup expected from ps plus subs and launch titles right when these consoles get first manufactured and produced right um and to get the technology out there right at, at a cost that the consumers are willing to buy they sell it at a loss but with the plan of, hey, don't worry, the game sells to peripheral sells. And in this case, now that they have their own networks and storefronts digitally, all those things and subscription plans now, you know, to pay online, all that stuff, those things will keep recoup the cost. But despite those things recouping the cost, 
they still have to resolve the issue of the console itself being sold at a loss. That is still a problem. That is, even though they are willing to do it at launch, they're not going to stay forever selling at a loss. They have to resolve the issue, and the issue is not going to resolve itself. They need something. They have to make moves to get the cost down of production, the production cost down, so that way it could go from selling at a loss to either breaking even or, in best case scenario, boom, make profit. Right? And with that, CEO Kazurai says PS4 is already profitable, and that statement was within the first year. Coincidence? I mean, should we go back? Right? What it says right here, where is it? Oh, Sony did not take any chance to quickly act by releasing a CH 1100. Oh, uh, no, right, right over here. I'm sorry. I'm looking at the wrong one. This is the PS. Uh, this is, um, this is the PS4 one. Oh, yeah, this one. Yeah, this is a PS4 one. My hair. I'm sorry. I'm bugging out. They released a new PS4 within 10 months. Quickly. Or do you really think it's this? You really think it's this? You really think it's these statements? This dude said they normally don't do this until mid gen. They normally don't do what till mid gen. They normally right. They're gonna wait till mid gen and just and just suffer losses for three years, four years. Really? That's what you think? No. Again, these consoles are produced at a loss, right? If you if you're selling a console at a loss, because the manufacturing process is expensive, you're telling me you guys ain't gonna sit in your ballrooms and like, how can we get this thing cheaper? Because we can't keep selling at a loss. You know what I'm saying? We got to think of something. And the number one way to do it is redesign. You know, find a way to get components cheaper. Find a way to get the build process cheaper. And yes, and sometimes you may have to redesign something else. You know, the way the motherboard is. Or maybe this, whatever. You know, something's going to come with it. And the moment you change something in that configuration, it's going to be classified as a new model. Because then it has to go through the whole process with the FCC and then the European equivalent, the Asian equivalent of those type of organizations. The moment you change one thing on the motherboard, you have to recertify it. With, and you have to declare it as a different model. Right? And that's the whole thing. That's what they do. Now this whole thing about oh, it's a bad design, it's glitchy, oh my god, it's absolutely terrible. Right? Oh, but before I move on to that, PS5 is being sold out of loss. Right? Just like how PS4 being a sold out loss. So I'm pretty sure the PS5, the new CEO of Sony, wants to make a similar statement. He wants to say this statement as fast as possible for the PS5. Anybody would. It only makes sense, right? Now, with this whole thing, this, this narrative of a poorly designed console, blah, 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 Sony sold 7.8 million consoles by the end of March. It's outpacing the PlayStation 4, even though the console... Is being sold out to this day and it's in high demand. MPD even reported that the PlayStation 5 is the fastest selling console in US history, both in unit, that means actual physical consoles being sold, and in dollar sales, meaning money being generated. In US history, that means this console got in the hands within the first five months by the end of March faster than any console device ever created. Faster than the Switch, faster than the Wii, faster than the PlayStation 2, faster than the Super Nintendo, Nintendo, Master System, Genesis, handhelds, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, 3DS, DS. You name the console device, PS5 did it better. With that vast amount of consoles out on the market, you don't think if PlayStation 5 was that poorly designed, you would hear more and more and more people just flip the hell hell out and be like, oh my god, why is this console trash? Blah blah blah, yada yada yada. With all the people that's owning the PS5 right now, outpacing the PlayStation 4, fastest selling in the US, will probably be a lot of noise. And it's not like we never seen a scenario where a fast selling console, the more it's sold, the more negative um talk about its manufacturing um wasn't done. You know what I'm talking about? Remember the Xbox 360? 
Yeah. The longer that kept selling, the worse it got for the brand. With Red Ring of Death, that was not going away. That's a bad design. That was a terrible manufacturing process. So terrible that Microsoft extended the console f for a three-year a, a three warranty, which costed them over a billion dollars to do. That is what happens when you have an actual bad console design. The more people that buy it, the more the word gets out that it's trash and that it's breaking and that it's affecting game and it's red ring and it's just dying. And the more people kept buying it and buying it and the news just got bigger and bigger. That's bad console design. This is even selling faster than the 360. And the last time you heard about any issues with the PS5 was around November, December time frame. Because fanboys was just taking videos and pictures and showing them over and over and over. Saying the showing pictures over. But here we are now in May. You hardly see anything about that. Any major issues with the consoles. But what do we do see? We do see Digital Foundry at the head comparisons. Many games are better on the PlayStation 5. Many games are better on the Xbox Series X. Some of them barely noticeable. Like, for example, the most recent is Resident Evil 8, right? They both run at the same graphical settings. Xbox has around a 3 second frame, a 3 FPS advantage over the PlayStation 5. While the PlayStation 5 has a huge loading advantage um, on it. So, given that you can get a PS5 as low as $399, along with Returnal, next month Ratchet and & Clank, and play Resident Evil Village, Xbox has not shown its huge advanced architecture and PlayStation 5 is definitely not as bad as what these guys are saying what is it where's my where's this dude at where's he at yeah this guy not even close this statement is straight up fanboy because you know if he'd done a little research he would clearly see that Sony does this all the time with their PlayStation consoles they quickly get redesigned as quickly as possible and when you look at facts when you look at performance and given the fact that more people on the PlayStation 5 then the Xbox Series X or S combined, clear as she, it's a great product. Especially if you don't really care about the disk drive, you can get that product for $399. And what it does at a $399 price point. It's a pretty amazing product, okay? So anyway, this is what the hot take is about. Don't listen to the fanboys, especially when you have like key indicators, like where it says Xbox. You know, if they talk about PlayStation, giving you advice on PlayStation... You might want to be cautious because their number one job right now, what they're trying to do is trying to set the stage where the Xbox Series X or any product that Microsoft does is the best in the world. So don't get PlayStation, get Xbox because that's what they want you to get. They're not going to be honest with you. Me, I tell you, get what you want based on what you want to play and the games that you like. These guys, they're going to tell you, you know, they're the type of dudes that be like, hey, what's your favorite game? Well, I love God of War Uncharted. You know, and I love Ratchet and Clank, so what console I should get? Oh, yeah, get Xbox, because you got Game Pass. They're, those are those dudes. Those dudes are just like that. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this hot take. I hope there's a little bit of factual information. I hope now you get a better understanding about redesigns and the intended purpose behind it. It's all about dropping a price. It's all about cheaper production, cheaper manufacturing, right? They're trying to get the console to go from selling at a loss to selling at a profit. And that's pretty much it, all right? This is your boy, Porter Rock Sammy 7. If you're new to the channel, hey, hit the subscribe button. I have a podcast every Thursday, Thursday, Tuesday, a podcast every Tuesday, 9 p.m. Eastern, 60 Frames No Light Podcast. Check out the last one so you can have an idea of what's it about. I promise you, you are going to truly enjoy it. And of course, my hot takes are supposed to come out every Thursday. Everybody hit the like button, right? Give a little love to the channel. Give a little love to the content. Get it trending out there. Repost it, retweet it, do what you gotta do. Send this all out through your favorite social media. I would truly appreciate, you know, the help. Anyway, your boy Port Rock Seventy Seven, your only friend in these YouTube streets, giving you these hot takes. And I'm out of here. You guys enjoy your rest of your weekend. Peace.